is CNN Breaking News. Hi everyone, I'm Cyril Vanier and we're following breaking news out of North Korea. Pyongyang has test fired another missile. A U.S. official says it was an intermediate range ballistic missile. Sources say it was launched from a province in the country's north and traveled 500 kilometers and landed in the Sea of Japan, also known as the East Sea. This happened just as U.S. President Donald Trump was hosting Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Florida. Standing side by side, both leaders made brief statements about Pyongyang's latest provocation. North Korea's most recent missile launch is absolutely intolerable. North Korea must fully comply with the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. During uh, the summit meeting that I had with President Trump, he assured me that the United States will always with Japan 100%. And to demonstrate his determination as well as commitment, he is now here with me at this joint press conference. President Trump and I myself completely share the view that we are going to promote further collaboration between the two nations and also we are going to further reinforce our alliance. That is from myself. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. I just want everybody to understand and fully know that the United States of America stands behind Japan, its great ally, 100 percent. Thank you. And CNN's Athena Jones, who was there, has more on that statement from Mr. Trump. Hi there. That's right. We did hear brief statements from Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and an even briefer statement, I should say, from President Trump uh, here tonight at Mar-a-Lago, the president's uh, state here in Palm Beach. Uh, Shinzo Abe, the prime minister of Japan, saying that North Korea's most recent missile launch is absolutely intolerable, saying North Korea must fully comply with the relevant U.N. Security Council resolutions. That second line there is an echo of a line from the joint statement put out by the U.S. and Japan after the two leaders, Prime Minister Abe and President Trump, had their first official meeting at the White House. In that statement, they urged North Korea not to make any further provocative actions, or not to take any further provocative actions, uh, and they talked about the need for it to comply with U.N. Security Council resolutions. So you heard the Prime Minister echoing that call tonight. He also said that during the summit with President Trump, Trump assured him that the United States will always uh, come to Japan's defense. Uh, and, and, and said that uh, the president and, and he completely share the view that we are going to promote further cooperation between the two nations and also we are going to further reinforce our alliance. After the prime minister spoke, uh, President Trump took to the podium and delivered a very brief statement saying, thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. I just want everyone, everybody to understand and fully know that the United States of America stands behind Japan, its great ally, 100 percent. Thank you. Now, I can't stress enough that that is a statement that does not at all address uh, what happened. It does not address the fact that North Korea uh, launched, launched this missile. It was a cautious statement, dare I say, a, a timid statement, uh, not the kind of language that we heard from candidate Trump or president-elect Trump, a clear signal that the White House is, is responding very, very cautiously to this, it, its first real national security test, now barely, not even a month in, uh, 
uh, to the presidency. Uh, so that is uh, the statements we're getting so far from the White House and the Japanese Prime Minister in response to this latest provocation from North Korea. And I should mention this is something that North Korea likes to do. They like to test new administrations. They fired, uh, they, they, they fired off their second nuclear uh, test early in, in President Obama's first term and their third one uh, just a month into his second term. So this is not something uh, that was not predictable. In fact, U.S. intelligence picked up on movements uh, in the past month or so that indicated this could be coming. Uh, and yet we get a, a very, very brief statement from uh, President Trump, a bit of a longer one from Prime Minister Abe uh, uh, in this uh, this first uh, response to, to a missile launch. Back to you. All right. For more on North Korea's latest missile launch, let's go to Matt Rivers, who's covering this from Seoul in neighboring South Korea. Matt, how will Mr. Trump's in particular short but unequivocal statement of support go down where you are? Well, I think you need to take what Mr. Trump said in conjunction with another big, uh, important visit that took place here in South Korea recently. And that was, of course, uh, when Secretary of Defense James Mattis chose to come to South Korea on his first overseas trip. I think there was a lot of nervousness here in South Korea and frankly in Japan as well uh, because of what you had heard President Trump say while he was a candidate, talking about maybe that the United States was overstretched in this area, that South Korea and Japan were not really providing uh, enough back to the United States in return for the very heavy uh, and cost-intensive uh, troop commitments that the United States has in this part of the world. But hearing the president come out and so unequivocally say that the United States stands with Japan, and you take that in conjunction with what the Secretary of Defense said when he was here, which was something very, very similar, that the United States relies on its allies in this part of the world to help combat the North Korea threat, and that, of course, would be North, uh, South Korea and Japan, the allies in the region. I think people here in South Korea, and, and specifically government leaders, are going to look at that and take that as a positive note uh, that they can expect help from the Trump administration, expect the continued support of the United States uh, that the South Koreans have, have come to rely on for so long now. A North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, said just last month that he could test fire an intercontinental ballistic missile at any time. Now, that potentially is something that could directly threaten the U.S. How much of a threat is North Korea to the United States at this stage? Well, there's a lot of, of questions as to whether North Korea actually has that technology. I think most experts would tell you that while they are moving towards uh, being able to launch an ICBM uh, successfully, they're not quite there yet. Uh, they've got a long way to go, as evidenced by the fact that many of their intermediate range uh, missile tests, like the one we saw this morning, uh, tend to fail. Now, we don't know whether this morning's intermediate range test was a success or a failure. The South Koreans tell us they're still trying to work that out. Uh, but the fact is, that the North Koreans have a long way to go. And then, you know, remember that once you build the missile, that does not necessarily mean that you can deliver a nuclear payload because there's more technology. First, you develop the ICBM, but then the North Koreans would then have to come up with the technology to miniaturize a nuclear warhead and put it on top of that missile. And that's a whole nother a step that they would need to take. And so while they could be a long way away from that point, most experts in this part of the world will tell you that the North Koreans are determined to keep moving towards that point, that that is their ultimate end goal, and that they're not going to stop because they know that this kind of program, this weapons program, is really their one card to play uh, on an international stage uh, in an international community that increasingly appears stacked against them. Uh, Matt Rivers reporting live from Seoul, the capital of South Korea. Thank you very much. Of course, you'll continue to monitor developments in the region for us. Well, Earlier, I spoke with Christopher Hill, the former U.S. ambassador to that country, South Korea. He's one of the foremost experts on this issue, and here's what he had to say about the first North Korean missile test since Donald Trump became the U.S. president. I don't think tonight was a crisis. This was an intermediate missile. Missile. We've seen this before. We've seen the range. Uh, there may be new elements to it, but tonight is not a crisis. But overall, this issue in the next four years will be a crisis because North Korea intends to have a deliverable nuclear weapon. And I think for um, for Donald Trump, it was actually this has been a pretty good uh, few days on East Asia policy. First of all, very successful visit.
visit to Korea and Japan by his defense secretary. And then he had a very successful uh, telephone call with Xi Jinping. And now what better way to show support and show solidarity with, with uh, the Japanese people than a North Korean test. So I think uh, it has been a good day for, for uh, the president in terms of the policy coming ahead. And I think it's pretty clear what needs to be done. First of all, the alliances with the with uh, Korea and Japan need to be strengthened. And in particular, I think the U.S. has a role in trying to strengthen the relationship between Korea and Japan. That has to get better. Uh, the alliance needs to be strengthened, and it needs to be strengthened through the delivery of America has at its best, which is the uh, which is this anti-ballistic missile system. And finally, he's going to have to pivot over and work with the Chinese on this because they need to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Right, and he has right. pointed that out. He has, in fact, said in no uncertain terms that the Chinese were not helping enough when it comes to North Korea. Well, uh, he's also implied that it's kind of their job to take care of this as if he was going to outsource it to China. And I think uh, certainly his conversations with Abe would reveal the fact that no one country can solve this problem. That's why uh, President Bush and President Johnson then created that six-party process. So I think uh, this has really given, it's been kind of a dress rehearsal for, uh, for President Trump in a sort of international uh, context. And uh, I think it's gone, it's so far gone well. And now he has to put together a strategy. And I am sure part of that strategy has to be a kind of deep dive with the Chinese on how we're going to manage this. Because no one wants that in the next four years, North Korea will be fielding a, a deliverable nuclear weapon. Uh, Christopher Hill, former U.S. ambassador to South Korea. Thank you very much. All right, you're watching CNN Newsroom. We're going to take a very short break, but when we come back, more.